You're listening to the Healing for Artists podcast. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. My name is Helene Yasmin, and this is episode two of the Healing for Artists podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about a question that one of you guys sent in. This is from Karis. How do you maintain good mental health after getting rejected from jobs slash auditions? This is such a great question because for me, I have been to a few auditions, not so many that many actors have been to, but I think I've been to about maybe 20. That is a ballpark figure. And you know, at first I was really not bothered about rejection as such as I was going into it with such a, my perspective was I'm still at drama school, I'm still at uni, I don't really have anything to lose, let me just go and get experience, which is great, that was my mentality, but I was really, must have been giving off this subconscious energy of, I don't deserve this job, I don't deserve to be here, I'm not good enough to be here, as even going into it, even though I cared about the role, I cared about the audition, my mindset wasn't, I'm here to book, it was always, oh it doesn't matter if I don't get it, which will inevitably not really land you the job if you're not even there to book the job. So now as we progress further and move forward into my career of actually going to audition to book, that's when rejection might feel harder and it might affect mental health more because the more pressure you put on yourself to book, the more pressure that you feel internally to get a job or get an audition will impact your mental health. So really we need to focus on allowing ourselves to not feel this pressure. Now there is several layers to this. So first of all we have our our inner dialogue, our brain that says Mm, you're not, you're not good enough, you shouldn't, you're not like everyone else, this and that, whatever negativity, whatever thoughts that you have that are holding you back, we need to acknowledge them. That is, for me, the first step that has really helped so far along my journey, is to be aware of my own negativity and my own thoughts that are holding me back. So for me, I'm just going to get real with you guys. For me, I was always thinking that I am uh, not good enough. I always thought since I started, I decided that I wanted to do musical theatre when I was 16. And I was under the impression that starting at 16 is really too late. You know, there's been so many other people that have been training since they were young. And, you know, I will just always be playing catch up because I'll never get to that level they've been training for so many more years. Okay, but now I've been training for about six months and I've noticed incredible uh, progression. I am self-aware enough to see that, you know, I can see my flaws and I can see my weaknesses, but instead of thinking to myself, oh, see, I can't do it. I've become more aware of it and realised that, okay, okay, I can see what I'm doing wrong, but all I can do is just try to do better next time. And that has, for me, the process of thinking like this has just lifted a weight that I put on myself to be the best, to be like everyone else because you're not like everyone else you are yourself and that is enough the other part of mental health and dealing with rejection is to you could 
work on having multiple streams of income, if that is your cup of tea. So what I mean by this is, as a performer who wants to go into theatre, we know that there's not huge amounts of money in this, okay? So um, on the West End, in the West End theatres, there is equity minimum contracts. So if you are a performer, if you are someone signed with equity, the union has its own minimum wage. And sometimes when you're working as a beginner or even someone who just doesn't have equity, you might have non-equity contracts and these, you just have to read them. You know, the only thing you can do is read the contract, know your rights, just try to get educated. On the equity website, they have a lot of information, a lot of resources that you can use. Ask for help, ask a friend, reach out to people, anyone, mentors if you have them. Just ask for some advice. So with these equity minimum contracts on the West End, they have classes. So a class C theatre is up to 800 seats. And I believe there's about 10-ish on the West End. And then there's class B, which is anything from 800 to 1,099 seats. And I think there's about five. And then they have a class A, which is um, 1,100 plus seats. And I believe there's about 14 or 15 uh, class A. Now with class A theatres, that's your um, Hamilton, uh, Victoria Theatre, where Matilda is, Cambridge Theatre, those types of theatres, if you are a performer in Hamilton, in Matilda, in these bigger productions, the pay on minimum, equity minimum, is about £80 per show which really is not a lot when you think of the cost of living in London, the cost of travelling, just basic needs and necessities, food, grocery shopping, just general day-to-days. That's really not a lot. So as a performer, I'm starting to realise, well, I don't just have to be a performer. That's why I've started this podcast. That's why I'm doing YouTube. I'm just playing around with a bunch of new ideas and also looking to get another job on the side because really the more streams of income you build up, the closer you are to financial freedom and you won't have to rely on a single job, on that one yes from a theatre company for a contract you won't rely on that single low-ish paying job. Now, of course, there are jobs out there, like even being an usher, you get paid way less than £80 a night, £80 a show. But even that is is a low wage as well. It's all very, very small in comparison to the theatre industry, which rakes in several millions Um, per year. So for me, the way that I have tried to alleviate the pressure away from um, getting that yes from an audition is to not rely on booking the job. To try and think about, um, well, I'm a performer, but I'm also an entrepreneur, I'm a business person, all of these things. Building a portfolio career, having your own streams of income so you can support yourself. So anything extra is a bonus. Um, That's just something to think about if you are someone who knows that your industry isn't high paying, isn't the best until you're really far on in your career to reach those higher levels. This is really for anyone who who has a passion, 
who wants to pursue that but might need some extra cash. You know, you can always make extra cash. And for me, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do that. But there's no time like the present to just start and to just figure out how, what you can do, how you can do it, all of that sort of stuff. And thirdly, just thinking about how to deal with rejection for the job from an audition and dealing with your mental health. So just take things slow. So if you have thought about having a business but you're still in the early stages like myself and we're just contemplating it, we don't actually have anything set in stone, there's no streams of income happening for us at the moment and we are relying on this job, then we start to think about, we've also tried to alleviate the self-pressures that we've put on ourselves. The third thing I would think about is just knowing what you can control and the things you can control are knowing your audition material so whatever they sent a booklet um something for you to learn learn it even if you don't have the most amount of time just try your best to learn it come prepared bring extra if it's a song, bring an extra song just in case. Come with a backup. Don't come with your whole entire book. They won't necessarily, that won't necessarily be helpful. But just come with the audition material all printed out, all taped together if it needs to be taped. Come with it, know it, and come with a backup. Um... Yeah, because in a performance industry, there's not a lot that we can control. So knowing your stuff and knowing what you can bring to the table when you go into the audition, that is one of the main things we can control. And it will make the rejection a bit easier if you know, I couldn't have prepared more for this. I learnt all the audition material, I've been practicing that script, that sides, that song, and I did it as best as I could, I couldn't have done it any better, then that job wasn't for you. I got this piece of advice from Anthony Anderson. Uh, he said, if it's meant for me, then it's meant for me. There's nothing more that we can do about that. You go in there and you make the character yours. This is my time. This is my performance. Nobody else can do it like me. So if they don't want it for me, then that role is not meant for me. Also, if you go in there and you're polite, you're nice, you had a bit of fun, there might have been some banter between you and the casting directors, and then you gave your killer audition, but you weren't right for that role, they might still remember you, they might put you on for something else. You never know. So the thing is with auditioning and for trying to book jobs is to just keep showing up. That is the only thing that we can do, is we're just trying to get our foot in the door, we're just trying to break into the industry, we have to just keep showing up. It's like entering the lottery. If you enter the lottery, you might might win. But if you don't, you never. You'll never win. You'll never know. So just keep showing up. Take it easy. Try and relax after every audition. I will either, well, pre-COVID, like, go shopping, get my mind off stuff, grab a coffee, grab a drink with friends, go home, drink some tea, relax, get into my PJs, have a bath, whatever relaxes you, whatever 
after the audition, forget about it. Try your hardest to just like put that in a box and go, if this job is meant for me, it is meant for me. I have given it my all and I'm not going to allow myself to worry about the things I cannot control. And you cannot control what the outcome of that audition will be. You can only control your presence in the room, what you bring to the table and how you deliver your audition. So try and relax after your audition. You did good, you, you did great. That's all you can do and now you just wait. But try not to think about it. I know it's easier said than done, I know, but just, you've done it, relax. And try and be aware of your own negative thoughts if you have any, acknowledge them and then the way that we can move on from them is to first of all acknowledge that they're there, then we can work with it later. And I think that's mostly what I have to say on this. Thank you so much to Karis who asked this question. Um, if you have any questions and you want them to be answered on the podcast, please DM Healing for Artists on Instagram or you can email them to healingforartists at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening. Really, really appreciate you. If you've made it to this far, hey, I see you. I see you. Thank you so much for joining. I will see you on the next episode. Take it easy. Thank <laughs> you.